Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the beautiful Carissa Grant. Carissa, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? I am doing very well. Thank you for coming on to do this. Thanks um, for having me. Oh, of course. Now, before we get started on why you're here, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, you are a comic book artist. You are writer. a writer. Yep. Um, and, you know, being dyslexic, writing was not always, you know, the easiest thing for you. Uh, when you first started writing a few years ago, it was mere just like one liners at a time. Uh, then after two years, you went to paragraphs, multiple paragraphs, and then that turned into novellas. Um, and then after meeting JC, the novellas turned into novels. And, you know, what can you tell us a little bit about Worthy, or Worthy Chaos Comics that people may not know about what you do over there? So one thing that makes us a lot different than other comics that you'll read, um, our story was from role-playing. So our characters were written by one person each. So everything mm -hmm. you read or see Serafina do, um, I wrote. So all her words, mannerisms, thoughts, everything is me. And then uh, Jessica, which is JC, she did Draven's act everything so you have two completely different personalities merging into one comic book so it, you've got these you know when you when you have co-writers yes yeah, sometimes they share and you know write the story together but ours is literally two separate people writing it so sure. it's a little bit different yeah right and, and that can also be beneficial too because when you're able to bounce ideas off each other it makes life a little easier in the long run too because you have that second voice that can be like yo that's really really good or, hey, maybe we should rework that a little bit. You can always bounce that off of each other. Do you find it more of, like, um, a benefit to have a writing partner? Absolutely, times a thousand. Like, we, like, we'll come up with one little tiny idea, and then the other person will be like, oh, we can do this to it, or this. And it'll turn this tiny little scene into, like, a whole book. Like, it'll just be, like, totally off the wall. Um, so you kind of, like, bat ideas off of each other um and like i said it's just two different people writing it and and my character re reacts to things that she writes and vice versa so we have this totally unique uh perspective you know when the character is is being written back and forth so the fact that we wrote this while role playing i think is a huge benefit to make it such a unique experience and it fits the comic book so well you know i mean we didn't do it on purpose we wrote 11 novels for fun while role playing and when we were done with series one, we we're like, this is really too good of a story to waste. And to be honest, we just really wanted to see it come to life. <laughs> sure. More well, than anything. The good thing about that is now the Indiegogo campaign is it Indiegogo or GoFundMe that you're doing. It's a Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Uh, that link is down in the description, guys. So you can check that out, as well as all of Worthy Chaos Comics' social media links and Carissa's social media links as well. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a big fan of comics, and I don't think there's that really much of a huge difference between the comic book world and the horror movie world. Everybody is so connected. And when you are really into comics, you get Comic-Con. You get people that will take days, you know, to pick out their outfits and to cosplay as their favorite, you know, comic book hero or villain. And that's not, a, you know, horror. We get horror cons where we do the exact same thing. You know, the passion of horror movie fans and comic book fans, they're all together. And I feel like we have this mutual respect and love for each other because we know the passion that goes into it. So um, we know what you're doing now. And like I said, guys, you can become a part of this by joining the Kickstarter. That link is down in the description. But here for a minute, Krista, I would like to go back to the past and talk about what got you started in the horror world, your first horror movie, and Carissa, the first horror movie you watched was? When I was six, it was Nightmare on Elm Street 3. And it was specifically the scene where the guy is the marionette. Um, mm -hmm. The heroin user was the marionette. And um, that was the first scene I saw at six. I was hiding on the stairs. And um, I was just fascinated <laughs> by it. I thought it was like the coolest thing in the world to be like, what the hell am I watching? Kind of right. thing. And that got me into horror. And then Resident Evil 2, the original video game, is what got me into writing horror. So, right. Well, that together. Resident Evil 2 game, like the original PlayStation 1 was dope. And then they had, you know, the, even the Nintendo 64 version, which was still cool. Um, and, you know, horror is just something that is universal. And it doesn't have to be jump scares and things like that. Horror literature has been around longer than horror movies. And I think that horror literature is just as amazing. So we know you were around six when you seen uh the dream warriors for the first time but do you remember who you were with the first time you had seen it 
I was by my, I wasn't supposed to be watching. So I was on the stairs watching it. My brother was the one watching the movie. Um, ah. And so I, I, I wasn't, I was supposed to be upstairs, but I was not. So <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was hiding on the stairs. Um, and I don't remember if I got busted, but I'm pretty sure something was said that I, I was like, oh my God, and, it, and I got busted. But so I, right. I'm sure I got caught. <laughs> Worth it, well, I tell you. This is universally for a lot of people, their favorite nightmare movie. A lot of people think that this franchise really peaked at the Dream Warriors. Um, now you talked a little bit about the marionette scene where you got you know him going, walking around, being you know pulled as a puppet, but it, which scene would you say it was that affected you the most from the whole film? Um... I would say either that scene or, <laughs> or the primetime uh, line, which I found out later on was improvised, which made it all the more better. Stop the prime time, bitch! Um, so those are the two that, uh, that stood out and I remembered for years to come. Like, even when I couldn't remember the movie until I watched it again, that was those two scenes are what stuck in my head. And, yeah. I mean, it's awful that, uh, <laughs> if you think about it, that... I, you know, my we like idolized this guy that like pretty much like tortured kids, <laughs> but it was just he was such a, a personality. You know, this guy was just a monster in his own right, but his humor is what just gave him life. You know, exactly. So and it, it's funny because we've talked about that before, like with the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Have you seen the remake? I have not. I, I um, mean, I've only watched Robert Englund, and that's probably who I'm ever going to watch until something happens too. <laughs> right well i just think that you know jackie earl haley is scary yeah. in the remake and you hate him there's never a point where you're rooting for him like you did robert england yeah and um it's funny because a lot of people that's their problem with the remake they're like you know i hate freddie i don't like freddie and i'm like he's a child killer like you're not supposed to like right. him that's what i'm saying like we idolized this guy he became our favorite thing but really, you're not supposed to. I mean, he did. Right. Yeah. And that's so, what Jackie Earl Haley did. Like, Jackie Earl Haley took that role and he, you know, did it better than Robert England. Now, I'm not saying he's a better Freddy because he's not. Robert England is Freddy Krueger. But he did what Robert couldn't do. And that's make you hate the guy. He's yeah. disgusting. He's vile. He's this, like, there's so much wrong with the guy. And that's what I love about the remake is the fact that it is a dark, nasty movie and you're not supposed to like him. And that's what is pulled off. Now, Nightmare on Elm Street is a big franchise, like I said off the top. And three is universally, most of the time, people say is their favorite. But which film in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is your favorite? Um, it would definitely be three. Yeah. I don't <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest with you. As an enjoyment thing, I, I know it's not technically part of that, but I don't know why, but Freddy versus Jason wound up being my true favorite because I think it was the funniest one. So in a horror sequence, it wouldn't be my favorite horror movie, but as my favorite mo enjoyable version of yeah. um, there, I, I really like Freddy vs. Jason. I think it was like, what, 10 years or 20 years too late <laughs> not to make it? But, oh, for sure. Yeah. But, but it's we, still, I, I don't hate the movie. There's certain things about it. Like, I think some of the acting years. is shoddy, and I think yeah. the CGI is fucking garbage. Yeah. But yeah. it's Freddy and Jason in the same movie. I'm in. I'm in a hundred times. Yeah, I'm in. Me so. Too. And, and, you know, and when you come back to say which one's more likable, of course, I'm rooting for Freddy, but you're right. Technically, Jason is the one that was screwed over because he was tortured as a kid. I don't know how he grew as an adult being dead, but he grew up as an adult. And, um, you know, so you have this, this guy that was, he's more the one you're supposed to relate more to and feel bad for. Um, but he's not as funny, so. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't guess, talk, so fuck him. Yeah, it just goes to show you how humor can almost save anybody, so. Right. Well, I mean, and Nightmare on Elm Street is one of those things that just, like, it, it took the world by storm. Because how can you escape somebody that gets you in your dreams? And they did a perfect thing in the Dream Warriors where they made these kids have special powers in their dreams. And I think that that's super awesome. And, you know, there are a lot of really good kills in the Dream Warriors. You know, you have, like you said, you have the marionette. You have Freddie injecting the heroin into the girl. You have Welcome to Primetime, Bitch. Um, which of the kills would you say is your favorite from Nightmare 3? Um, yeah, that's a that's a hard choice. Um, I'm going to have to go to Primetime, Bitch, because it was just so, you know, especially being the TV addict that I am, if 
mm -hmm. one of them was my nightmare to go, that'd probably be the way to go. Because <laughs> right. I never leave my couch. Like I'm either <laughs> like watching a horror movie, watching TV, or like writing, and I'm still in front of the TV. So yeah, that would then that would be my my nightmare is being killed by my TV. Well, and it's funny because like I used to say that as a kid all the time. Like I mean, I've said this on the podcast before, but that's one of my absolute favorite lines from any movie ever. Like I'd be playing Nintendo and I'd be get to the boss and be like, yeah, welcome to prime time, bitch. You know, like that was like my thing as a kid. Yeah, I, me too. Yeah. I, I love Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I think that it's not my favorite. My favorite will always be 4. And I know a lot of people hate that movie, but that's the one I grew up with. That's the one I watched the most growing up. Um, but I think 3 is the best made film of the bunch. 1, I think, will always be like it's the top yeah. like top tier yeah but three when it comes the thing that three has different is you're actually rooting for all the kids like yeah. in one like yeah you're rooting for heather Langenkamp, you're rooting for nancy but the rest you're like i don't I give do. a shit yeah <laughs> yeah they're, they're just you know they're they're meat meat bags but yeah. in three you you actually are rooting for every single one of these kids like you have like a, a this real relationship like you feel like they're your friends. Like you are in this friend group and you really genuinely don't want to see any of them get hurt. So I think that's what makes part three so special is it's one of the few slashers where there's a whole group of friends that you're rooting for, not rooting for the villain to just take them all out. So uh, Carissa, we talked about your first horror movie being Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and what that movie means to you. But now here for a second, I would like to throw a little bit of a curveball your way. My little buddy Ghostface is here and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Carissa? What is your favorite horror movie of all time? Of uh, all time. Well, it depends. Do you, do you count Shaun of the Dead as a horror movie or as a comedy? Oh, yeah, I do. Shaun of the Dead. I have his autograph picture here that he sent me. I have the movie poster right here next to me. So I'm going to have to say Shaun of the Dead. And I met him in person uh, Simon Pegg, and he is modest and um, amazing. And, you know, I, I sent him, because uh, Resident Evil, did you ever see Spaced? He was in Space, the show he had. Mm -mm. So he's playing Resident Evil 2 in the show. So I had to, this oh. years ago. Yeah, so I had to send him, I had two, of course, um, collector's edition Leon Kennedy trading cards. They were like the shiny foil, whatever. And I sent him one, and I yeah. never sent a letter to anyone ever. And he sent me um an autograph back and i was thrilled and 10 years later when i met him in person like oh you're not gonna remember this but i sent you something like 10 years ago and it was all oh, the leon card and i was like yeah <laughs> so he still had it that's and it awesome was like you just made my entire life i can die happy now so yeah well and this is something that everybody that watches this podcast is gonna be like oh here we go um <laughs> i will fight to the death that sean of the dead is a horror film the I only heard. bad thing about that movie is the title because yeah. people hear Shaun of the Dead and they think it's like a spoof movie, like scary movie or airplane. And it's not at all a spoof movie. Like it's it's its own story. It's not slapstick. I mean, it's slapsticky to a point, but it's not like goofy. Like there's yeah. real feelings in this movie. There's real horror in this movie. Yeah, there's some real laughs, but horror comedy has been a thing forever. And Shaun of the Dead is my absolute favorite horror comedy. And I yeah. sob Every time I watch this movie when Barbara's dying. Oh no, 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 no. Come on, come on. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Come on, please, stop it. <laughs> I'm a fucking wreck at that part. Like Simon Pegg, death's yeah. kiss with how great he does in that moment. No, mom, please, no. Like, it's so awesome. Um, you know, even with the dad, you know, the stepdad, you know, and then oh, yeah. he's like, um, yeah, the way that he. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you're be a good boy. You know, he's like, you were already so old by the time I met you. It was hard to be that father figure. Like, that hits. You know, it's like, yeah. damn. And they talk, and they, they also do some amazing reference. We're coming to get you, Barbara. We're coming to get you, Barbara. You know, they are paying homage to these things that have come before them while, you know, spoofing the zombie genre. He's a real fan. But exactly. And it's a great film. There's, like I said, genuine laughs, genuine fear genuine feelings i could talk about this movie for hours <laughs> like i had a double feature on the same dvd and it was Shaun of the dead and hot fuzz my wife ashley could verify this just so people don't think i'm talking out of my ass when we would go to bed at night i would put that dvd in and i would hit repeat on my dvd player and Shaun of the dead and hot fuzz would just play on repeat all night and i could wake up at any point and be like oh i would just start talking and say the words of what was happening oh, those yeah. are two 
I think those were the best one-two punch because I know that they're technically not connected. But to me, you have that trilogy of Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. And I think they're all brilliant in their own way. But those movies are just so special. And yeah, again, anybody, I will debate you <laughs> anywhere, anytime, if you want to tell me that Shaun of the Dead is not a horror movie. And I'll give you a thousand examples why. So yeah. Um, yeah. thank you for bringing that up because yeah, I, that's no, one of my favorite I, it, movies it, it, ever. It's my favorite horror movie, but I feel like, like you said, the, the title kind of makes it, a, you know, sound like a parody, and it's not. And my favorite line in it is where he's like, I'm the running buffet, you know, and it's just like, and he just runs off. And, yeah. Yeah, and like, even the um, the marketing of the movie even made it seem like a spoof. Like, you have the big, like, uh, the scene in the alley where, yeah, yeah. like that was part of the trailer. So people didn't understand the, you know, yeah. how strong it was. So um, with a movie like Shaun of the Dead too, it's really easy, like you said, to call it a spoof when it's not. Now, real quick, I want to bounce back to Nightmare on Elm Street 3. And what we're going to do is we are going to rank this on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking Nightmare 3 on acting, production, score, nothing like that. What we're doing here is strictly ranking this movie on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Krista, what would your ranking of Nightmare on Elm Street 3 be? Like effective of like how much it scared me or how much it changed my life? Just strictly how much it actually affected you, like what it meant to you growing up the first time you had seen it, and what it the change it made in your life. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say like four and a half skulls. Like it is it is pretty up there. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. and I do want to say real quick, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street changed my life too. You know, the whole franchise it changed the way I look at movies. It changed the way I look at film, and it, it means so much to me. Now, guys, we are at the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop. But before that happens, I do want to remind you, I have all of Carissa and Worthy Chaos social media links down in the description, as well as their Kickstarter campaign. So make sure if you have the funds, you go and you support these independent artists. Because without them sometimes, without us, I'm sorry, their art won't get made. And then, yes, there's awesome perks and there's cool reasons to help. But the main reason is you're helping independent artists to get their their art made. And if somebody's out there creating art, there's got to be an audience for it. So let's help them find that audience. So, uh, Carissa, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Um, everyone else, if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps the channel way more than you know. And also make sure you're following Sledgehammer Horror on social media. All those links are in the description. We'd love to have you along for the ride. And until next time, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.